to Hedgehog Hollow. We're super excited to be back hopping with Altenew. Now, when today's video is over, you're gonna to want to make sure you hop to the Hedgehog Hollow blog, links in the description below. Not only do we have a brand new website for you to check out, but also we have fun giveaways to go with this. And the more blogs you hop to, the more chances of winning fantastic prizes you have. But today, Altenew are launching these awesome brush marker refills and I have tons of them to share with you. You can see some here. There's even more colors stood up for me to share with you. And I'm gonna show you five different ways to use them in your crafting. So lots and lots of inspiration. Now these marker refills are meant to go in your really lovely um, markers here. Now I did a video a while back, again, showing you lots and lots of different ways to use these brush markers in your crafting. If you missed that, check the video out, of course, after this one in that top right hand corner. We will link it up in the blog post too. Um, there's a few different sets of these markers that you can use. Um, there's a spring set, I think there's a winter set, and there was like the original basic set. But really, really great to use, um, really fun color selections. But the refills, of course, are designed to refill your pens. But today I'm gonna to show you some really different ways you can use them as part of your crafting. So the first thing I want to do is grab a piece of watercolor paper and you can use whatever your preference is. And I've got some here. I also have pre-cut a few things ready to go. So this is a leaf medallion. I wanted to show it to you in large and in a small version here. So I'm just gonna grab a wide brush and I have my rinse well ready. If you've never seen this, it is the most awesome tool because every time I press this plunger, it empties out into the tray below and it refills automatically from this canister with clean water, which is just super, super cool. So I'm going to just pop this all down on here and you can do any color you like but I just want to make sure that this is wet. And I'm gonna do the same on my medallion. Um, you could do it on a full piece and then die cut it afterwards. But just for time in the video, I pre-cut my watercolor paper with that beautiful leaf medallion die. And I'm just gonna choose a couple of colors to work with. I think I wanna go with purple wine and lagoon. So inside the boxes, they have their refills just like this. And I'm not gonna keep the boxes afterwards. They just happen to all come in these cute little boxes. And my trash is down there. And I'm gonna squeeze some out onto my easy clean mat. Just like this. So you can use them direct or you can use them um, in the pens, of course. And I'm gonna grab a second paintbrush because I want to mix up my colors. This one on and so I'm going to pick up some of that lagoon first of all and I just want to make some fun backgrounds so I'm just going to dot the color around no real kind of pattern to it I'm gonna I knew these colors would mix nicely to make pinks and purples and you know all kinds of colors so that's kind of my aim with this just to make some random colors so it doesn't have to be anything super difficult but I kind of wanted that tie dye effect in here. And now what I'm going to do, which is kind of the really fun part of this, is I'm going to grab my water bottle back here, spritz them because I want it to be reasonably wet. And I also want to clear some space because I need that back there. Grab some rice, just regular cooking rice. And when I asked upstairs, do we have any rice? Everyone kind of looked at me a bit strangely. And all you're gonna do is throw some rice on your project. Now the rice is going to absorb some of your watercolor. You can throw a little or a lot on there. And we're gonna leave this to dry. That's why I wanted to do this one first. Uh, so if you ever come to dinner at my house, I do keep rice in the craft room. Um, yes, I do. I also keep salt in the craft room, bleach. Um, now this is the coolest part. So you see how I have this really dirty purple water? And now I empty it out and my water refills clean and I don't have to go and change my water bowl. Isn't that just the coolest thing? So now I can make it blue and I can empty it out, make sure it's nice and clean and it refills clean. 
So that's what the rinse well does. As always, of course, we'll link all these cool tools up for you. But I'm just gonna pop this over here to dry. But that's all you want to do is just leave it over there. The rice is gonna absorb some of that water and you're gonna get some cool textures in your project. Now, my next project, we want some cardstock again. And I'm gonna choose a color. This time I think I wanna go silver. And I'm gonna go really simple. So I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a shake because I think it has a little bit of pigment in the bottom. So I want to make sure I pick up any of that. You can see there's some mica and stuff in here. I don't think it's got a metal ball in it. So I just wanna make sure I give it a good shake to mix everything up. Just like this. Right there, we're nearly there. Good shake. There we are. And then I'm going to put some down just like that. Again, don't need a huge amount. And then I want to use a round brush, thinking not too thick, not too thin. I'm gonna freehand something. I'm kind of feeling brave here, not my speciality. And I also don't want it too wet. So kitchen towel to the rescue. I'm going to just dampen it off a little bit. Pick up some of your um, ink, and then I'm just going to drag my paintbrush across for a straight-ish line. And ish is kind of important in this one. And you're not going for perfection. You are going for thick, thin, just organic stripes. And that's gonna add to the list. So what I do is I'm stabilizing my hand with my little finger with my pinky and I'm just dragging and I'm letting the brush go from thick to thin to thick because I want it to look like an organic stripe. And you see how that gets dragged across. And if you need to, you can pick up some more paint and you can go over the top. So you see, really, really simple. If you find it easier, you can go up in the air. And I always start left to right because then you'll, you always kind of start in a different way to how you finish. And we're gonna use this as a really, really pretty background. And then that's it. Really simple. We're gonna mount all of these into cards. I'm gonna show you how the finished cards come out too. I'm gonna to leave that one now to dry. So that was one idea I had. Now, the next idea I have to share with you is another really fun idea. And for this one, we're gonna need a little bit of press and seal. And you all know I love my press and seal. You can also use saran wrap for this technique or cling film. And you want it non-sticky side up if you're using press and seal. There is a difference. You'll feel the underside is a little bit stickier. Again, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna grab some water. I'm gonna clean up my water. Here we go. And you kind of want to remember where you put the water area. So I'm gonna put mine here-ish. And then think about what colors you want to do. So I'm just trying to remember what items I had to go on top. So I'm gonna go with the light turquoise. I'm going to go with some, actually I'm gonna go desert night, I'm gonna change my mind, and some midnight violet, just because I happen to know that these two colors mixed together beautifully. Um, you could also add maybe a little bit of pink in if you wanted to. Um, there's all sorts of fun things you can do. But I just need a dot of each on your surface. And you could use the Alt New Stamping Mat. Um, I just ordered mine, I'm looking forward to trying it. Uh, you can use something like the glass mat, anything non-porous, a piece of acetate would work fine. You just want something that you can drop your colors onto and have a little bit of working space with. So then I'm gonna take a paintbrush and I'm gonna pick up some color and I'm just gonna drop some around, maybe a little bit in the middle there. And then I'm gonna take another paintbrush and I'm gonna do the same again, not really kind of thinking about where I've put it. And then you take your watercolor paper, same again, and put it down smush it, technical term of course, turn this over and then you want to press and this is why it's important to have non-sticky side up and then you can kind of decide how you want to do this and you'll see sometimes you get kind of creases and you might like those creases, you might want to straighten them out, it's up to you but when you lift this up you see how you get this really kind of soft 
mixed together color um, and it just gives you a different effect you wouldn't get that same effect if you dropped the color onto the cardstock you wouldn't get these same lines. It gives you a more organic effect. And if you're a bit like me and you really struggle to just kind of be random about where you put your colors down and you struggle to get these organic edges, doing it with the saran wrap or the press and seal is a really, really great way to go. It'll give you a fantastic effect without having to think about it. And it kind of forces you to get that organic effect. So that's another option for you. Um, I'm just checking my notes as to all the different fun things that we wanted to show you. So we've done three so far. Um, other things you can do is kind of a more rainbow effect. So if we grab a couple of things, so if we go for a Richard, um, and then I was gonna go more into like a sunshine, lime, Actually, I think I'm gonna start with an orange. And then I was gonna go into a blue, but I'm kind of uh, going on to the lighter shades as opposed to darker shades. I'm just making sure I like that. I think rather than I'm gonna go fresh lemon. So I want light shades and I'm gonna stick in these ones here. So I'm going with Sun Kiss, Fresh Lemon, Lime and Turquoise. Again, I'm just gonna do a drop of each and I'm gonna put them in the order that I want to put them on my card because I find that that means I actually have a chance of putting them down in the correct order. So let's put these down like so. That's one. And then we're gonna do the yellow. Then we're gonna move into lime. And really easy to open too. You can see there's no extra packaging. So nice and easy here lime and then we're going to move into turquoise just like this and you can see how easy these backgrounds are to create as well and then everything i'm going to add to them is either a stamp or a die so i'm not doing anything difficult to add on to it at all I want it to be super super easy card making so we're just going to take a couple of wide brushes um roughly the same width there thereabouts so again it's super easy I'm going to make sure they are all wet and ready to go. There we go. I'm gonna pop on my kitchen towel. And then we're just gonna add some fairly loose stripes across the middle here. So something like this. And then like this. And I'm just overlapping slightly. If you did it wet, uh, wet paper, you get a different effect but I'm doing wet on dry. So of course you can play about with different effects depending on what you wanted to do. And I'm just kind of adding that color block in the background. And then I'm gonna add a blue block, just like this. And so what I'm actually gonna end up doing in the end is, I think this is my orange, I can test it like this it is, to extend my orange up slightly. Of course, I'm not gonna cut this cardstock down for mounting, so I'm gonna add my element just over this here. And it's just gonna be a really quick, simple, easy card. So you can just add color blocks like that in as well, then add a sentiment over the top. And it's super, super simple. And we love, love, love simple here. So um, we've done our stripes, we've done our rainbows. And um, the other last one I want to show you is something just called a smush. So we're really used to doing smushed backgrounds. I guess it's the technical term we're gonna be using here with our distress inks, but you can do the same with watercolors. It's not limited to distress inks. So let me show you what I mean. Let's pick out some other fun colors to work with. So let's grab some sea breeze and I'm gonna go back to that fun pink that we had. That's purple wine. Maybe that was it. Um, all right, let's go to purple. And let's also throw in some dusk. Okay, so I'm gonna throw three colors in here. I'm gonna show you that you can absolutely do a smushy background. So I'm just gonna throw a couple of drops down of one color. And then I'm gonna throw down some blue. And of course you just kind of want to make sure you know where you're throwing them. It's easier if you throw it on white, but I've kind of filled up my white here. And then again, I'm going to throw some pink or purpley pink down. Maybe you want to throw a drop of purple in there just so it blends in a little bit. And then just to help those colors move around and activate, I'm gonna make sure 
I split, spritz, and you see as soon as I spritz, those colors already started to move. So watercolors react with water. Um, so again, I'm just gonna take these colors, I'm gonna smush my way down, you can see one went out the edge, and then I'm gonna do a pickup. And you can see I already created some beautiful kind of movement. You can go back in, you can kind of add to it. Um, maybe you don't like one area, but again, it kind of forces you to be more organic. If you're like me, as I say, I'm terrible at taking my paintbrush and then I'm like, oh, I just want that bit there or, or those kinds of things. Like this one, I'd like a little bit more pink in. So what I can do is I can just dab some pink off to the side like this and I can spritz my pink just like that. And then I can go and pick up pinks and kind of add it in. And then I'll dry this off and I've got a really pretty panel to work with on my background to add die cuts to, to now add things to it. So I'm gonna do some quick clearing up and then I'm gonna show you how these mounted up into really, really pretty cards. Okay, so we made some really, really pretty cards. I wanted to show you how that rice piece came out. So you see this really cool texture that you ended up with when the rice. So I dried it with the rice on with my heat gun and then kind of flicked the rice off afterwards. And this is how my piece ended up. So you can see on the die cut piece, it just kind of picked up lights and darks, but I'm really happy with how it came up. I cut some of the edge of this leaf mandala up as well. So I just ended then the For Someone Special, which is out of that leaf medallion stamp set that coordinates with it as well. And I just love the quick, easy, kind of clean and modern effect of that card. And then there's just some black velvet cardstock underneath. So really, really simple, but really effective on there. And then with the other ones, again, just a very simple card here, just use the you are loved. And I just double stacked and then offset the sentiment. So this is the brushed gold cardstock. And again, cut one out in black underneath and just kind of shadowed it just to really make it pop out. Black layer underneath and cut it down. So again, really simple mattings and things, but made it look super, super simple under there too. So uh, really kind of, Nothing difficult, quick and easy bulk cards. On the hello here, I used the um, new Obsidian ink and then put clear embossing powder over the top so it comes up a little bit of an enamel on there. A little bit of a nice glossy finish on there too, but that bold sentiment on the top just pops off nicely. Then on our rainbow piece here, you can see I turned it on its side. I added one of their doily dies and then a miss you on there just to kind of highlight that little accent too. So. Again, really, really simple, really nice, but again, just that pop finish on there too. And then again, our stripes. So just accented them with that friend, again, being silver, and another one of their uh, simple background dies to cut it out of some matte satin uh, cardstock in like a peacock blue underneath this time. Everything will be linked up on the blog for you. We'll put all the different colors of cardstocks that we use, but really, really quick and simple matting. So you can create bulk cards, all of those beautiful things in there for you. Now, a couple of quick things I also wanted to mention to you that I think you'll find really useful. If you enjoyed all of these hints and tips, go and join our craft challenge. It's thecraftchallenge.com. We'll have links in the video description too. It's a 14 days alcohol marker coloring challenge. Every single day, I'm going to be teaching you my top tips. So you can become an alcohol marker coloring expert. Um, you can check that out in the blog as well. And of course, don't forget to keep hopping with Alt and You to win amazing, amazing prizes. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, hit that join button to become a member. Really, really amazing community we have here at Hedgehog Color. And give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the five different ways to use your watercolor refills here. And I can't wait to see you again tomorrow with another tip, trick, tutorial or maybe something a little bit different. We even have two videos for you today because we still have that Crayola takeover going on. So go check out that Crayola video as well and I'll see you again tomorrow. Happy crafting everyone. I'll see you again soon. Bye.